Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about something which is really, really personal to me and has changed my life for the good, for finally, after so long. It is, of course, the bladder operation which I went for on the 15th of September. Now, I've kept you up to date throughout the whole of this journey of mine and I've had this horrific problem for a very very long time and I'm now at a point where I can openly talk about it and that this part of my life has as I like to think been put in a box closed up and put away and is just now a memory. I still have days which I have the problem there in the background but on the whole I absolutely feel amazing to be able to turn around and say to you that the operation I would be happy to say did indeed work. So I had bladder distension surgery on the 15th of September and that was in a way to kind of desensitize my bladder. For so long I have had overactive bladder syndrome and it has absolutely changed my life. I will categorically sit here in front of you and say that there was not a minute of a day um, for the last 18, 19, maybe even 20 months where there wasn't really a time where I wasn't thinking about where a bathroom was, if I needed to go to a bathroom, if I was having a problem, if, for example, I'd have a drink, it wouldn't be long after when I'd need to find facilities. I'd always have to think if I was going out, I'd have to plan, and my family, if I went with my family, kind of almost got in a routine that Bradley needs to make sure that there's a bathroom there, or if we were going anywhere, you'll find there's a bathroom just there, or I'd have to start to real plan my whole day around the bathroom and that was me for a very long time and that all started from when I had my first hernia repair. Now I want to keep this really really positive so I won't go into, I will update you towards the end of how I'm keeping with um, the problems with the, the hernia issues and the mesh and the groin pain and the le problem I'm having with my leg which unfortunately hasn't gone away so I am but then again the operation wasn't meant to to resolve that problem I absolutely knew that it was just wholly and solely on the bladder problem which I was experiencing and I'd had that problem right from when I had the first hernia repair which was very strange and I've had that many tests and that many scans to determine if there's any connection personally I always feel that you know your own body and I never had a problem before this started when I had the hernia repair the very first one back in November 2017 Right from then I started having problems which I'd never experienced in my life. I've seen and sat in front of for so many hours different urologists. I've paid extortionate amounts of money for urologists. I've seen them on the NHS, the fabulous service here in the UK. That is not sarcasm. It is a very fantastic service here in the UK which we are very privileged to have here. And I absolutely wholeheartedly say that it is an incredible service to have. And I feel privileged to be able to have used it and to be able to support it as well. Um, and it was an NHS operation which got me to where I am today. So I am grateful, sincerely grateful with all my heart to the service that got me here. Um, and do you know what? The consultant which I'd actually built the rapport with, who actually done my surgery, or surgeon as you would wish probably to call him, um, was pretty amazing, I have to admit. Was absolutely pretty amazing. I mean, I have hearing problems and right from when I went into hospital, who looked after me, the nurses which looked after me, the consultant, the surgeon, were incredible. Even the people which took me down to the theatre. I had a very, very positive experience. Everybody treated me with care. And through having such a very... Dignity is always key for me. Absolutely it is. I like things to be done in a certain way. I like to speak in a certain way. I like to, to hold myself in conversations and in areas of whether I'm with a family, whether I'm with friends or what have you. I like to I like to come across in a proper way. I don't like things to be sort of I'm not one for joking, I'm not really one for sort of um that's my twin brother who's more for that. But we're both very, very serious. But for me I suppose you could possibly say I'm always sometimes a bit serious. But what I'm trying to say is through something which was such a very a sensitive issue, um, it was handled in the utmost of respect and how it 
how it happened and the whole procedure and my hospital stay couldn't have been any better to be quite honest with you. When I was in the hospital after the surgery I did have a few problems, I'll be very honest, I had some problems with bleeding as you probably would from having something um, put into your bladder through, as you can well imagine, the only way possible into your bladder without having any cuts in through your privates which um, is pretty extreme I have to admit so I had some bleeding afterwards, um, I wasn't able to open uh, my bladder um, by myself for a lot of hours afterwards which of course caused me an awful lot of pain and discomfort and right when I was experiencing all that I thought to myself this operation hasn't been positive it hasn't been successful um, but absolutely and and that was due to get a whole lot worse because I went home um, and then after about I suppose we should I suppose I should cover this how it happened really so I went home and I noticed a difference and I thought brilliant I mean the first time I was really struggling to be able to pass urine to be quite honest with you um, I'd gone from literally going every hour for months and months and months for this of course three year period of my life being turned upside down to a point where I'd had the surgery and I couldn't go at all and I think I can remember coming back up from the recovery room at about um, half past four about half past four um, in the afternoon, of course, and I still hadn't, I still hadn't been able to go to the to the bathroom at half past one in the morning. So that long, I wasn't able to go for, and I was in a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort because, of course, they were giving me all these drinks, and it just was not happening. And I was literally right getting to the point where I was going to have to have a catheter to open up my bladder, and literally, I kind of. Just, I tried literally everything, the old trick of standing in the bathroom, the water running and all sorts of things. And eventually I did manage to go and I had some, unfortunately I had some problems with bleeding and things, but I was treated very well and very, very quickly and things. So it was, it was great. Um, and I was looked after very, very well, again, with the utmost of respect and dignity was shown to me, which was amazing. Um, what I would just say, which was really incredible, is where the hospital actually where I was the ward had been moved around and they'd had some refurbishments done but what was really strange was the ward I was actually on um, the same ward my nan was eight years ago when she had her hip replacement and she fell and I was there every single day for five weeks and the nurses and things re all remembered me eight years on and, and it was incredible because the ward I was in of course was men's now but back then it was for women and my nan was in the bed opposite me and do you know what? when I got there I thought this is really strange I could I could recognize this place and then it was a nurse which recognized me and they said did was your nan this this uh, this lady and she mentioned my nan's name and I said yes she is how do you know and then it clicked who she was with me and then eight years on we had this huge conversation about how well my nan is and they actually thought that bless her she wasn't here anymore but she certainly is and she's very very strong and she's still with us today which is incredible um and i was looked after amazingly and for the whole time i mean my nan has alzheimer's and she isn't and i mean throughout covid you, you can't visit anybody in a hospital anyway but um it really felt like that my nan was with me and it really felt that everything throughout my life my nan has been there and it really felt that because of course I'll, I'll be honest I'm a 27 year old man and I was scared going through this I was scared that what if something didn't work what if I would be what if I would have incontinence uh, for the rest of my life what if I had these sorts of problems and and how would how would that go how would that work so it was lovely to think that I mean I had my mum on the phone all the time to me and my brothers and my dad and it was just incredible and I have the ama amazing support network but because my nan has Alzheimer's she's not like how she used to be she's still there and I love her and I treasure her of course and she does me but it was really lovely to sort of have that connection and I was looking at this bed in front of me and I thought that's where my nan used to be and I'm here now and it was lovely to have that um, but on the whole I feel good i am having problems with my groin i am having problems with my leg um but in terms of bladder i had an awful infection afterwards which really knocked me for six and then i updated you two weeks on and i was getting on really really well and it's been three weeks on from that now and in terms of the bathroom i no longer need to go every hour i no longer need to when I start to feel, oh, I need to get to the bathroom, I now I now can wait. I can actually go on and do other things rather than having to rush straight to the bathroom. It's really, really desensitized my bladder. It, it, it certainly makes me feel as though I can hold a lot more. Um, I don't have that weakness there now. I don't have that sort of that issue where 
oh my god, I need to get to the bathroom immediately or something's going to happen, or I can't go out because, I mean, I can't go out very much anyway because I'm going to get onto that in just a moment. But if I do venture out now, I don't have to panic and worry about the bathroom. So anybody who is sitting there watching this and has an overactive bladder, and of course, I wouldn't recommend any type of surgery, but if you're at that stage where it's recognised that you have a major issue and you've tried all sorts of things and I've tried physiotherapy, I've tried medication after medication after medication which I'll be very honest had a lot of side effects for me and made me feel really unwell and for the last I say 18, 19, 20 months had had really significantly ramped up and I mean I had the problem for three years throughout having hernia repair operations and as things had grew worse in about the last sort of, as I say, 18, 19, maybe 20 months or so, things had really become, it was just getting to the point where I couldn't even go out, to be honest with you. The bladder problem was so, so bad. Um, and that was the last resort. Um, I had urodynamics tests. I had a cystoscopy test. I had a, a, a rigid cystoscopy test when I was under under the anaesthetic. I had biopsies. And I'm awaiting my appointment to come through to chat with a consultant now about whether or not this has worked. But I'm telling you all on my channel and my viewers that I feel from a bladder health perspective that things have certainly changed. And I've, and I've literally in the last couple of days said this to my parents and they're always asking me how I am. But um and all of my family are and different friends and things and the people who are there for me. And and it's great to turn around and say that, you know what? Yes, things are improving. Things are moving in the right direction. And from that perspective, I can really start to put that away now. And I can put that part of my life behind me. It's been three years. It's been three years. So it's amazing to be able to start to turn around and say that. It really, really is. So that's amazing. That is amazing, I have to admit. What I would say is that, unfortunately... In terms of my walking, I haven't been able to completely benefit from the, uh, the surgery because I am having a lot of problems with walking around. So if you've watched my channel and you've followed my journey and it's and it's under Hernia Hell on my uh, channel and different things in relation to hernia repairs and things. I had my just very quickly, I had my first hernia repair um, after an accident or a fall, what have you, on holiday in June 2017 and a lump appeared, whether or not that was sort of it was progressing up to that sort of accident, that fall. Or that sort of, I, I done some cycling things on that holiday in June 2017 and had this lump appear. Um, and then again, I went on holiday in September 2017. And then November 2017, I had this hernia repair, this feminal hernia repair. And um, it got to the point where it was really affecting my walking on my right side. I had a lot of pain in my groin, a lot of pressure. And I had a very big lump um, hernia and I was starting to wear a hernia truss belt and all sorts of things. It really, really affected my life. Didn't have a very good experience, wasn't very good under the anaesthetic, had the bladder problem start off straight away. Um, and I had a mesh repair and I had two lymph nodes taken away as well. Um, didn't recover very, very well at all. Let's then fast forward into July 2018. I had a second hernia uh, re repair done. This time it was ingrenal. Um, in between that November to eight, uh, July, I had a lot of problems. Um, I had a suspected hernia quite quickly. Again, I was slow to recover. I had the surgery in July 2018. Again, I, each time it's affected my walking severely, it seems to press on anything in my groin. And I feel it's very difficult to put pressure on my leg. I find it very difficult to walk around, whether it be the mesh. I've had, I've had many endless appointments with consultants, doctors and what have you. Fast forward into December. Uh, what was it? December 2019, I want to say. So 2018 to about midway through 2019, again, I had a dropping sensation and it was suspected that I had um, a third hernia. Um, but because of the scar tissue and things, it was very difficult to see. So I went through a time where I had steroid injections, uh, steroid injections and anaesthetic in my groin to try and calm everything down. It worked for a small amount of time. We're talking weeks, not months. Um, and then fast forward to December 2019. And I was diagnosed with having another third hernia. And they thought that the feminal hernia was reoccurrent. So coming into this year, I've had that sort of hanging over me. But for the first three months of the year, I was still able to walk around reasonably fine. I had days where it was really quite difficult for me to get around. I had a lot of pressure, a lot of pain in my groin, um, but it was uncomfortable. Then we kind of got to about March and I could 
feel things, I was starting to have more bad days. Um, I was having more pressure in my groin, more pain. Um, it was waking me up throughout the night. Um, bathroom related problems, of course, weren't helping and I had a lot going on. And of course, that was really affecting my mood as well. Um, and then I'd say from about March to about now, so we're in October. So what's that? March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So we're talking seven months. We're talking seven months and things have got now to the point where I find it very difficult to get around. I find it very difficult to um, walk on my right leg. Um, I have a dropping sensation. I've had several visits to uh, doctors, hospitals. I've been back and forth consultants. The original consultant which done my surgery, I was referred to a vascular specialist surgeon because my leg actually is starting to change colour. Um, it's like a bluey colour. Um, I'm having a lot of pain and discomfort. It kind of hunches me over to one side. It gives me a real bad discomfort in my back. Um, it makes me lean over. I find it very, very difficult to walk straight to the point where um, it was suggested that I walked with a stick. Can you believe it? Um, or a crutch to help me get around. So this is actually what I'm using now to get around um, inside. And I have one which I take out with me um, when I leave the house. And that's just to try and keep my back aligned and as straight as possible. Because when I'm walking on something, I do notice that naturally I sort of... Um, I sort of, I don't suppose, I don't kind of know how to put it, but I suppose I try, I compensate for sort of the way I walk because it's very painful and it's very difficult to walk on like a um, something which drops down and I feel sort of something there, like quite uncomfortable and quite an uncomfortable ridge in my groin. Um, I've heard lots of all different things and I'm waiting for my latest appointment. I've had so many appointments, it's difficult to keep up, but I'm waiting for my latest appointment now to see the top hernia specialist in his, in his field and I'm told that that was going to be in January. It's now been brought forward into November, but because of everything going on with COVID, um, I'm not sure if that's going to be happening. But rather than just jumping in with surgery to take out the mesh and to look at doing another repair and to see what's going on there, because it's been all sorts of things have been thrown about that it's scar tissue. It's not another hernia. It's another hernia. I am a true believer that we know our own bodies. I feel something drop down. I feel a sharp pain there at times. It's very difficult for me to get in and out of the bath. It's very difficult for me to get in and out of the shower at times. So the crutch comes in with me in the bathroom and that stays by the shower at times and it helps me get out. Um, it helps me get in and out of the car, I have to admit. And it's been an absolute life changer because I don't now suffer with so much of a bad back. Um, so it's great. Up and down the stairs and things in the house is brilliant. Um, and that keeps my back in posture better than what it was without using it. So that's how things have changed. So that's why I haven't been able to enjoy the benefit of the bladder surgery so well. But the bladder surgery has been an absolute godsend and has really, really worked and trained, changed my life. Um, the crutch is really, really helping getting getting around. I don't use two because I find that too much. But one just to support my side, my bad side and my back. Brilliant. Um, and yeah, sometimes, unfortunately, I do need a bit of help with things, which is rubbish at 27. But I'm, I'm looking forward to this next specialist appointment because apparently it's all happening on one day where I'm going to have another specialised type of scan from this top person in the world, nationwide, what have you, um, who's going to do it. They're going to inject into nerves and things to see if they can dud down the sensation to see if that helps. They're going to see if I do have another hernia there and then what the possibility of, of having it repaired and what they're going to be able to do for me. They're going to see if the mesh is flipped or folded or torn or something's happened with the mesh, which is causing me so much pain there. Um, they're also going to try is it radio frequency therapy to try and dud down the pain from the nerve. They're also going to try um, some physio, some intense physiotherapy, which I have tried, but it did make things severely worse. And that was about two months ago now. And actually it got to the stage where I'd done all this physiotherapy. And then one day I had this horrific pain. And I had to be taken to A&E um, and I was given pain relief and things and looked after very well there um, in the emergency room because I had so much go wrong, to be quite honest with you. And that's what started the ball off from having all of these appointments, um, which have now got me to the stage of seeing this top specialist um, in the world. But apparently he practices here in the UK um, and he sits on the hernia board here in the UK and locally 
I'm due for an update, would you believe it? <laughs> um, so that's going to be great. And then if that does, I'm told if that doesn't all happen, then I'll be offered a surgery to do something with the nerves and then they'll look at taking the mesh out. But right now, the risk is too great for me to just go ahead and have the mesh taken out because of where it's been fixated in my groin and in the femoral canal. So lots going on, lots to follow. And honestly, some days I don't know how I keep up with it. But... I do because I have had some fantastic luck with getting through this bladder problem and I've had some amazing uh, luck with getting through this. I have an amazing support network from my incredible parents and my family and I still have my nan, bless her, um, which is so, so incredibly important to me. Um, but going forward into the future, I think it's bright. I do have my down days, I have to admit, um, but wouldn't we all? But I always think that there is somebody by far always worse off. Um, but this is just me updating you predominantly on how well I'm getting on from the bladder operation, but I just thought it would be important to update you with how I'm going with my with my sort of hernia journey and difficulties and repair type thing. So thanks very much indeed for watching this. It really means the world to me if you're watching this. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart with all my incredible comments, which I receive. And it means the world on a on late evening when I'm feeling down or I'm feeling really low and whatever you want to call it or really, really rubbish. When I'm not looking at the next best hairstyle to do um, or planning my life or studying or what have you or my finance related job, um, I make the time to sit there and take every single word in what people write on my channel. And it's just incredible. So thank you. It means the world to me. Thank you very much. So I think that brings us to a nice end there. So I will be updating soon when there's more to update in relation to how I'm getting on with the hernia problems. Um, but for now, thank you very, very much indeed. And until next time, we will see you then. Bye bye now.